Okay, thought I'd shoot a little video of my uh, 24 volt uh, A0 LN TV conversion before I finished dressing up the cables and got everything all buttoned up. Um, the uh, I'm prepping for uh, replacing a dual volt alternator with a single alternator at some point in the future. Um, I got a uh, a, a uh, very good deal on this uh, Vanner um, equalizer slash converter uh, which takes 24 volts and makes 12 volts output up to 100 amps so I thought I'd go ahead and, and proceed with this part uh, of, uh, of my modifications um, on an A0 there's normally a vehicle interface module right here and on later ones there's a um, the transmission control module is mounted up in here. So um, this is the only place that I really found that I like to put this. Uh, I didn't want to put it out in the weather. Any place else on the vehicle um, was off the beaten path. I would have had to run wiring out to it and then back from it. And I just didn't like the idea of that. So uh, I relocated my vehicle interface module. is tucked in down underneath the wiring there. Um, I need to free up a, a little bit of cable length uh, up in the dash. One of the cables to the to the vim is really short and the other one's about three feet longer than it needs to be so uh, i get a little more cable uh, room i can tuck that in there a little bit neater under the wiring but everything fits and the, the dash panel closes up and the uh the airline's still all uh, all good and everything so uh, as it sits right now this this all works pretty good plus the this location is right along the pathway for dc power um, so I really didn't have to wire too much out of my way to uh, to accommodate this change. So there is only 24 volts running up to this cab now. It uh, runs along its normal route up into the power panel up to terminal X1, which is a 24 volt test point. Um, from there, I branched a small line off to a disconnect switch. This will then uh, this applies 24 volts um, back down. Uh, to the vanner, uh, which in turn then feeds 12 volts back up this lead, back up to terminal X2, which is the uh, the place where the 12 volts from uh, from down below normally connects to. That 12 volts in turn uh, powers the rest of the vehicle. Uh, I've tested this quite a bit. It uh, seems to work great. Uh, the only pitfall I can uh, potentially see is that if uh, middle of winter, batteries are weak, long cold crank, uh, if the 24 volts dips low enough, it might knock the converter, might drop offline, which means it removes, it doesn't all, no longer put out 12 volts. Uh, on the A0, they use 12 volts for control power. So when you flip on the ignition switch, you're turning, you're using 12 volts to energize the 24 volt ignition relay, K2. Uh, if you lose 12 volts, it's the same as you turning off the switch um, and that would uh, kind of put a damper on starting the vehicle. Uh, so I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run a, a small wire through a couple of inline diodes to knock the voltage down a little bit uh, from the starter circuit over to back up the coil voltage, the 12 volts being applied to relay K2. Uh, that should keep K2 um, locked in place. Uh, during the crank. Once you're done cranking, you've removed the load, the voltage should then be sufficient to, uh, to keep the converter online. So uh, I think that will that'll work okay as a uh, just as a backup plan um, in case I'm really trying to start with uh, cold weak batteries. Uh, if not, I can I can rig a jumper and manually bypass K2 and, and start it that way. So it's really no problem uh, to get around, maybe just an annoyance. Um, with the disconnect switch, uh, when I turn it off, the vanner will uh, no longer draw 20, any power from 24 volts. And since it's feeding the 12 volts, uh, this modification slays the 12 volt vampire load that the A0 LMTVs have. The, if I was using a Victron, um, a Victron Orion, which is my original thought. Like I say I got a good deal on this one, so I went ahead and proceeded with it. A Victron Orion is uh, probably a little less than one third the size of this Vanner, um, and they're good for 70 amps of, of 12 volt output, uh, which is which is plenty for the truck as long as you're not planning on adding anything really massive 12 volt. 
Uh, you've got plenty of capacity. Uh, 1079 pulls about 33 amps with all the lights on. So um, a 70 amp Victron would, uh, would work good. Um, it would mount right here on the inside of this kick panel without any problem and would set right up in here without having to move the VIM or the, uh, the transmission control module would all exist right above it without any problems. So um, that would be a little bit easier modification uh, using the Victron. Anyway, uh, more from under the truck. I'll show you what I did down there. Okay, the changes I made uh, down here along the frame um, allowed me to remove about 25 feet of heavy gauge cable and do away with six um, connection points that are out in the weather. Um, we used to have a 12 and a 24 volt cable that ran from the from the cab down along the frame all the way back to the uh, polarity protection box back here. Uh, there were two cables that ran from the alternator back to the polarity protection device and then there were two cables that ran from the polarity protection device back to the batteries. Uh, there was also a ground cable that ran from the batteries up to the instrument shunt uh, instrument shunts used to measure current. And then uh, the other side of the instrument shunt, it went uh, down to the terminal, the negative terminal on the front of the starter motor. And then, of course, there was a 24 volt cable from the batteries to the starter solenoid. So, um, in doing this, uh, I removed obviously the polarity box and the shunt and all those six connections and all those interconnect cables able to repurpose some of the cables and uh, either shorten them and put new terminal lugs on them to uh, put them into their new uh, their new position. The line here coming uh, coming off the alternator that is now the 24 volt line feeding the cab. It comes up to the 24 volt terminal on the alternator. The other large line 24 volts goes back to the positive terminal on the starter solenoid. Then from the starter solenoid there's a battery lead that runs back to the uh, 24 volt battery output of the battery box. Uh, this is still the dual volt alternator so in order for it to operate properly and give full output it, uh, it needs to see the 12 volts out of the middle of that 24 volt battery. So uh, this line was the uh, was the 12 volt line that used to run to the cab uh, from the polarity box. Uh, it was long enough to reach, um, when I pulled it out of the cab, it was long enough to reach from here back all the way back to the battery. So that's where it goes. It runs all the way back to the battery box. Uh, these other two lines were old STE lines that uh, um, I wired to 12 and 24. They actually feed up. I tap them out of my uh, up in my dash panel and they feed my my dual voltage voltmeter up there. So I get uh, direct alternator output slash battery voltage right from that point. So yeah, still have to get all the cable, uh, the uh, wire loom material back on them and get the rest of the Adele clamps back in place and and uh, get them back secured back in their uh, their normal routing. Because um, this was the way the, this was the way the cables used to route was up through here behind the intake manifold and and then down around the engine to keep them up away from the the uh, exhaust manifold. Let's go over this up. Okay, on this side uh, we have the the 24 and the 12 lines coming down. Um, they separate right here. This one heads back down under the frame. Um, this one goes up to the solenoid positive uh, terminal on top of the starter solenoid. Uh, the other positive lead runs back along under the frame back to the batteries. Uh, the ground lead runs uh, runs along through the frame and uh, connects to the front of the starter motor, which you can't see. It's down below this, down on the front of the starter motor housing. Um, I'm turning this uh, frame structure into the floor of my habitat. So this will be the floor of my habitat. Um, so the normal battery cable routing was up over the top of this frame. So I had to pull all the cables back through and underneath. So they're going to run down through here. I need to get a, a protector around them, but I put a hole in the battery box, in the front corner of the battery box, for the now three cables to come up through. And that's what I have here is uh, I have a ground lead, I have a 12 or a, a 24 volt lead, and then the 12 volt lead, which I need to cut back to length. It's still a little long. Um, I might leave it. It might actually work okay. And that leaves me enough room to uh, 
uh, to slide the batteries out because the habitat floor is going to be right down on top of this so it's not going to be easy to get in and up on top here I'd like to actually have the battery slide out a little bit from underneath the habitat floor if I have to work on them uh, by using group 31 batteries you could actually fit eight group 31s in this space um, so I'm using two for my service batteries I can put up to six more of them for my uh, for my habitat batteries little solar trickle charger keeping the batteries floated while I have this all disconnected anyway that's all for this video